Please feel free to turn on your cameras again. I see some people turn them on and then quickly turn them off, but please turn them on so I can see all of you and feel less alone here in the void. Thanks, Fernanda, Clara. And it's even you all the way over in in uh, the Americas early morning. Oh, well done, everyone. Brilliant. Oh, it's nice to see you guys. Hi, everyone. Um, so welcome to the February community coffee and chat session. Um, this is a community engagement forum initiative and the community engagement forum is um, an online community of practice on community engagement in displacement responses. Um, we were a community who share resources with each other um, and uh, we also organize learning events such as these monthly informal community coffee and chat sessions um, on topics that have been requested by um, the forum members. And today we are joined by Mika and his team in Mozambique who have piloted this tool from the from NRC's community coordination toolbox. Um, and uh, it's a tool for facilitating community participation in uh, humanitarian assistance, but specifically in defining and monitoring impact. So it can be used um, to facilitate um, you know, participation um, throughout the project cycle of service delivery, but it can also be used to define and monitor um, participation itself. Uh, in humanitarian assistance. And that is how Mika and his team have used it. And um, I will show you here now just visually what it looks like. Um, so it can help you a little bit when um, uh, Mika is talking about it. Um, let's see now, this is... This is what the tool looks like, just so you have an idea. When uh, uh, Mika and his colleague um, Edin, I believe, um, will present um, how they used the tool. And um, I hope that you'll be as excited as I am about um, this exercise and how they've used the tool. Um, I think I've contacted Mika on an average every two weeks, the last six months, saying, can you present now? Can you present now? Can you present now? Do you have any findings now? So um, I'm delighted to be able to introduce him today. Um, and I'll stop sharing now so you can actually see Mika. Um, can you turn on your camera there, Mika? Yes. Uh, yeah. Good Please afternoon, go everyone. ahead. Uh, Yes, but I will not uh, keep my, my camera on for too long. Uh, uh, the, the internet connectivity is a bit poor at this site. So for for me to maximize the bandwidth, I will, I will, reduce, I will remove my camera. It's fine with you? Of course, yes, go ahead. It's fine, it's fine. Thank you. So th thank you very much. So I, I have my colleague on the, on the line called Idin. Uh, we were working together in uh, piloting uh, this this tool uh, on the community the community feedback uh, tool. So we we opted in to uh, to uh, pilot this tool in uh, in Mozambique uh, because we we were uh, launching uh, community led projects. So we felt it was a good opportunity for us to pilot the tool as well. Having run community-led projects for a couple of months, we thought we could, uh, could pilot this tool uh, just to also uh, improve the level of uh, service provision and also uh, as a way of uh, 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 checking the satisfaction levels of, of the uh, affected populations with the services that they were being provided. So we just introduced the Mozambique program uh, in Mozambique. We are managing uh, a total of uh, 76 IDP sites under, under IOM. 
So Mozambique is a is a complex uh, emergency scenario where we have displacements uh, that are being caused with uh, disasters and we have uh, displacements that are being caused by uh, by conflict. So I'm based in the northern part of the country where we have displacements that we, that are being caused by uh, by uh, by conflict. Uh, we have some not state armed groups that are in conflict with the government uh, and uh, they, they are conducting some various uh, attacks and uh, this has resulted in uh, in massive displacement of uh, of people so we have it hello we, we have a total of uh, 125 idp sites so from these 125 uh, idp sites uh, uh, IOM is managing uh, 76 of these uh, IDP sites that are scattered in uh, different uh, districts in the north. Uh, so today I'm, I'm, I'll just talk about uh, uh, the, the operation that we have in the north, uh, uh, which is more of established. Uh, that's where we implemented. Uh, that's where we implemented this tool. So from the 76 IDP sites. We we narrowed into uh, a district called Metuje. We have about um, we have about um, seven districts we're operating in, uh, but we 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 picked one district called Metuje, uh, which is in terms of accessibility. Uh, the the districts uh, scored all the points, and uh, this would like ensure easy monitoring and. Uh, and uh, you know, follow up of, of activities. So we picked up this district, and we then picked up a, a site called Saul Two, S A U U L Two. So we picked up this site where we had uh, CCM activities that had been going on for for some time, and it was a it was a relatively established uh, site where we had um, uh, 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 all the IDP representative uh, committees. Where we had the majority of the of the services uh, in place, so we felt that um, if we would uh, test run this this tool in this in this site, uh, we could have like some some better results as compared to other sites that that already had uh, poor service provision uh, and uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of issues. So this Saul tool, uh, we it has got 144 households. And it had uh, it has displaced uh, persons from districts called uh, Musimba de Praia, Midumbe, Makomia, and Kisanga. So we implemented uh, this this tool to understand the level of community participation in decision making, as well as uh, identifying the problems and and needs, as well as measure the level of satisfaction of the of the community. Uh, so we we started with. Uh, a, a, a problem uh, identification uh, process uh, where where we uh, where we had the community like identifying the challenges that they had in the in the community and then uh, prioritizing like the, the the most the the ones that they felt needed to to be addressed. So uh, our team opted to work with a site management committee that was in the in the site that was already uh, functional that had already been trained that was working in the site so they had sessions with this um, site site management uh, committee so these this 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 went through these uh, discussions this site com management committee uh, was was involved in these discussions of uh, discussing the problems in the site and the prioritization process so and this site management committee um, identified the uh, issue, the issue of access to water. It was the main main challenge that 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 they that they identified in the site, and uh, they felt that uh, they needed to to look at the commitment of the of the water partners, uh, the commitment of the water partners. The, in terms of uh, uh, their involvement in the decision making in relation to uh, water inter interventions. So the co Hello? Yeah, 
Can you hear Hello? us? Hello? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the the communities um, uh, we we express sentiments that they were seeing uh, activities being done, but uh, they they were not being delivered in the best way that would help the community. So, uh, they came up with uh, five indicators of change that they identified. They they wanted service providers to carry out community consultations. And uh, in ca carrying out these consultations, this was one. They felt that service providers working in, on, on, on water needed to carry out community consultations. And the second, the second indicator, they, they wanted uh, service providers to take into account the issues that would have been raised by the community uh, from these community consultations. Then uh, they wanted uh, service providers working on, on water to, to allocate uh, materials and tools for the maintenance of the water systems. Then they also wanted service providers to train uh, water maintenance committees. And they also uh, wanted, uh, uh, they, wa they wanted also to mobilize their own funds as a community uh, for them to also contribute in the ma management and uh, maintenance of the of the of the of the of the wash in infrastructure. So, from from these uh, from these uh, discussions, the community identified um, a baseline. Uh, they were taken through the process where they identified a, a baseline of. of, of they identified what needed to be evaluated. Then they identified the indicators for change that needed to be tracked, and a, a baseline was 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 developed. I'll, I'll show the final product later. And they and they and they also agreed on a on a regular review of the process where they would have some 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 community meetings to review the the progress which was being made in uh, in addressing these uh, community community concerns. So over. Over a period of uh, of six months, the they had a, about three meetings where they were they were reviewing these um, these uh, indicators that that they uh, narrowed down these five that have already indicated. So they were making a review uh, after every every two months. So from from the process, uh, we we have a, a number of uh, lessons that we learned. From, from the initial period where we've implemented this tool for these uh, six months, um, I need to admit that we we are still we are still implementing this tool uh, for a couple of more months. There are a number of, of things that we've observed that would need to change, um, and uh, we'll be will be affecting those those changes uh, the, in order to to ensure that the process is effective. But presently. And now we've implemented this tool. We already have some some lessons learned. Uh, the first the first lesson that we've learned in the implementation of the tool is that this community feedback tool is quite effective in in enhancing the participation of affected populations in site activities. So the introduction of the tool generated so much interest from the community, and there was no need for external motivation in follow up of activities. So. Uh, uh, the introduction of the tool has, has generated so much interest from the from the community that we didn't need any any external motivation for them. So we we have them coming up up front uh, to to participate in meetings and to to track on the progress. So there's there's so much excitement in it. So, but the the most important thing that we've learned is that the communities need to fully understand. The, the benefits of the tool in enhancing their living conditions. So if they fully understand the benefits of the tool in enhancing their living conditions, I think that's when we can have such a, such a high level of participation and such such level of enthusiasm from among them. Then uh, the, the other point is that the implementation of the tool needs to be accompanied with complementary trainings to ensure that the communities engage meaningfully. So this is that what we've observed that there's need for some complementary trainings in the targeted community uh, for this for the implementation of the tool to be to be effective. In part, particular, trainings on subjects such as 
disability inclusion, uh, service monitoring, standards, uh, care maintenance, community participation may be required depending on the issues prioritized by the community. So uh, in this, in, in our exercise, uh, in order to ensure that we have uh, 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 meaningful participation from persons living with disabilities, uh, and also that issues of uh, related to persons living with disabilities are also prioritized either in setting up indicators and so on. Some disability inclusion training might be needed or some disability inclusion uh, awareness might, might be required. So also uh, service monitoring as well uh, might be, training might be needed, uh, particularly in relation to, to standards, sphere standards and so forth. So this, this might be needed. And, um, if 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 the communities are raising and if the communities are raising issues in relation to to uh, to to camp management, probably we might need to 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 to, to just to uh, give them an understanding of the of the camp management standards and also issues of of participation as well, so that they they fully understand the whole participation cycle. And, and and what is what is involved in the role that the communities play. So so this was 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 missing, and we'll try to incorporate this in the next phase. And also there there is need for flexibility in selection of the core group members uh, selected to steer the monitoring and activities. For the current for the current pilot that that we ran, the team worked with the site management committee. This was good because the site management committee examines overall service provision in the site, but it had limitations as well. There was need to argument, uh, argument this uh, core uh, selection with core group with, um, with some other community groups. So representation, representation of persons living with disabilities could have been beefed up. Uh, numerical representation of women in the group could have been beefed up, beefed up as well. So uh, more efforts could have been made to, to ensure quality participation by, uh, of women by assigning uh, responsibilities. And some, some members of WASH committees from other organizations could have been cooperated as, cooperated as well. So the, we, also, we also saw that the community feedback tool works better if other core CCCM functions um, uh, are functional at the site. So particularly for SAU2, uh, there's irregularity inside coordination meetings. So if there was a regular engagement with the respective WASH partners, um, if, 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 if these were regular, uh, engagement with, 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 with uh, WASH partners could have been easier and uh, com com commitments towards uh, improvement could have been tracked more closely. So the core core system functions in a selected site need, need to be to be functional. So um, then they, there's need for strategies in in incorporating uh, persons with lit literacy challenges. So we, we we have a challenge in northern Mozambique where where we have uh, huge sections of the Polish population with uh, with uh, with the literacy challenges, especially among among women. So there's need for for strategies in uh, in dealing with that. Uh, there's need for for complement complementarity with other programs as well, just to ensure effectiveness. So there was complementarity with the women participation project uh, in this site. Uh, some project activities such as uh, uh, adult literacy, uh, uh, women leadership trainings uh, to boost participation of women. Uh, we we could have done more. In, in, in reaping the benefits from the women participation project for, for this exercise. So it, 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 it happened coincidentally that this site that was chosen is the site where we have provided uh, women leadership trainings, it's the site where we have uh, done adult literacy programs. So this, there was, the, the program could have reaped more from, from the benefits of this because we already had some women that were taking up leadership roles that are already confident that could do, take up leadership roles but we could we could have done more in uh, in harnessing the the benefits of this, and we also had an adult literacy program specifically targeting targeting women, and we could have uh, even uh, done more in uh, in, uh, in 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 reaping the benefits from 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 this. So uh, the support of relevant partners is key, 
So depending on the issues prioritized, you know, so the support of relevant partners is key. So there's need for them, for the partners to understand the objectives of the two and avoid misconceptions, which may lead to their lack of, of cooperation. And there's need for resources to be set aside for the implementation of the tool. So the, the implementation of the tool might come with some unfo un unforeseen costs. OK, so issues to do with translation, you might need some some extra volunteers as well. Uh, 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 just to facilitate uh, the process in terms of uh, uh, following up and, and so forth. So uh, you might need to set aside some some resources for this. So. Depending on issues prioritized by the community, the improve, improvements may take longer than than expected. So a CCM past partner must must be prepared to have a follow up program, which may go even up to up to up to 12 months, depending on the responsiveness of the service providers. So uh, in in our case, actually, we 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 have to extend up to up to 12 months. Uh, to track uh, the these indicators that were provided that were uh, selected by the by the community, and also there's there's need to adhere to the basics for community meetings to ensure effectiveness as well. Uh, venue for meetings needs to be to be central. Uh, a time of meetings must needs to be as short as possible. Uh, we need to balance this because uh, you know uh, affected uh, populations if uh, if other you know other chores as well that they have to do. They have some other livelihood activities that they engage in. So we need to balance all that and not keep them very long in meetings. There's also a need to, to consider also uh, uh, specific issues that relate to, to women. Uh, for, 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 for Mozambique, uh, women also have some household roles that they play. And uh, so we need to ensure that they remain available. So we, we need to ensure flexibility on that. So in terms of in terms of the challenges that that we've faced so far, uh, like I've already highlighted, the issue of uh, literacy challenges, particularly among among women, this 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 affects equality in, in participation. Uh, and for for our context in particular, we we happen to have sporadic returns uh, from the sites to the district of origin. So this 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 then threatens the continuity of the of the exercise. So when when you have selected a committee and you have maybe a significant number of the of the committees now returning to their to their districts of origins or or, or now making some visits to to scout uh, to their in their district of origins to, to look at the possibility of returning, this then uh, affects the continuity of the of the exercise. So balancing up uh, follow up, follow up on this project with other core CCCM tasks. Uh, such as response to, to new displacements uh, proved, proved a challenge, especially in a context where the CCCM modality is mobile. So for, for Mozambique, we don't have a static CCCM. We have a mobile CCCM approach. So uh, uh, balancing uh, uh, other core CCCM tasks uh, with the implementation of the tool then proved a challenge, especially in a context where you have got uh, uh, spiraling uh, new displacements, which which CCCM is the front line in, in responding to it because CCCM provides reception to new arrivals and so forth. So this this proves a challenge. Then uh, maintaining the focus of the group on issues identified so that you have got effective meetings as well is is, is required. So for, particularly for us, the exercise coincided with a shift in food assistance from from general food distributions by WFP. To vulnerability, uh, vulnerable group uh, targeting. So the teams observed that the committees always tended to discuss insufficient food assistance. You know, so this ended up being topical. Yet they, they prioritized uh, different issues and they were tracking different uh, issues. So now this then change, sudden change in programming from WFP, uh, then uh, would tend to. Uh, 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 shift the focus of the of the group. Hello. We can hear you. Yep. Uh, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear hello? me, Mika? We can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me round off. Yes, sure. Yeah, let me round off. Uh, okay. Uh, 
so heightened insecurity in some cases, uh, restricted access as well. And uh, also lack of government uh, participation affected accountability. So particularly for, for, for Mozambique, we have some, some, some donor funds that come uh, through the government uh, where some, some wash infrastructure needs to be, to be put uh, in, in some of the sites, especially some world funded, world bank funded projects. So if we had incorporated the Department of Infrastructure from the government side, this would ensure that also they they would also incorporate they would incorporate community participation. We lost you again. Mikam. Mikam. Are you there? Mika or Idin, if you're in a different. Uh, hello. Hello. So there you are. I, I was saying that uh, yeah. the 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 lack of uh, limited participation of, of of government affected sustainability. Uh, mm. Then also uh, also resources for complementary trainings were not were not. Uh, yes. Uh, we, hello. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we keep losing you. Yeah, yes. we keep can losing you. Mm, we can hear you now, but we keep losing you. You, you um, can hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right. So perhaps let me let me show the. So, yeah. Show okay. the tool that you used. Uh, OK, let me. Um, yes, yeah, so let, let me show. Yeah, so so this is the progress so far. Mm -hmm. uh, as I have said, um, so these are the five indicators. Oh, wait, go back to. Oh no, it's because it's cut off. Are you there again? Mika. Mikam? Yeah, yes, can you <laughs> can you yeah. see the the screen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so 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 far this is the the tracking that is uh, mm. that has been um, taking taking place across the five uh, indicators of change that the communities uh, proposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So we have the baseline with the dotted line mm -hmm. and the, the first uh, follow up, which is a continuous line, which is black in color and mm -hmm. the second follow up, which is which is a continuous line in which is blue in color. Mm -hmm. So. These grids, uh, these steps on uh, on these lines here, uh, are the levels of of change of improvement, with the with the best improvement being at the at the far end at the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So we've. Uh, the issue of uh, service providers still uh, carrying out community consultations. So the, the community still feels that there's, there's not been much movement on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe they're, they're not happy with the, with the quality of, uh, of consultations. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's not been much movement. Uh, in terms of allocation of, uh, of materials or tools for, uh, for management and maintenance of water systems as well, there's not been um, there's not been much much movement as well as you can see from here. Uh, it's still at the as, at, at the level that they felt it, it like the way they said the baseline is still at the at the same level. Yeah. Then the the then the 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 indicator on the community creating their own funds for for management and maintenance of water systems. There have been some 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 change. 
So they, 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 there's been some progress on this line. They feel, the community feels that there's been progress on this. So they, they rated higher so far in the past six months. They, they feel that they, there's been some, some significant movement. Uh, then also on the issue, on the service providers uh, taking into account issues raised in community consultations. So, so the community still feels that there's not been uh, much much change as well. So you can see see from this that the 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 the, the, the community still feels that uh, uh, more can still be done, and uh, its issues have not been have not like really improved on this front. Then on the training, uh, on the training of water water maintenance committees, the 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 the, the communities uh, feel that uh, there's been some improvement over the over the six months period where they'd set the baseline at uh, at 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 at, at, uh, at one on the scale here on one, uh, they've been a uh, one one step forward, and uh, but but it has remained on this for the past uh, six months. Thanks very much, Hello? Mika. Hello, yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks very much for sharing yeah, all of this yeah, I with hope us. It's, uh, I, I hope it's clear. Uh, sorry for the for the glitch. Uh, the, the internet connection where I am is not so so good, so. That uh, is but understandable. I hope it was clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. No, we, we I think we heard 99% at least of it, so it was absolutely understandable. Um, um, I want to see if uh, anyone have any questions for you while we have you here. Um, uh, you can uh, raise your hand or uh, um, in case I don't see you, maybe you can stop sharing your screen, um, Mika, and then I can see if I can see. Um, Hadia has a question. Oh, okay. Um, please go ahead, Hadia. Hi, Mika, and hi, Christine, and everybody else of this community who I've never interfaced with. I am a GenCap in the Philippines, and um, you may all have all heard of the ERC flagship pilot. So I'm in one of the pilot countries, and uh, the pilot is looking at changing the way humanitarians work, which is the start of where Mika has explained with community consultations, not <laughs> go to them afterwards and uh, consult with them and then just tick certain boxes and write certain best practices onwards. I was very curious to know um, um, that how did, and I may have missed that part because I joined uh, 10 minutes late, so I apologize. Um, that did they come together symbiotically? Did you put out a call? And then people came in and within that were women hesitant because they were less literate and they felt it may need more literacy. So how did your membership evolve? And I, I love the way you've shown um, the spider diagram uh, and, and that they were happier. Uh, as they went along, but was the level of satisfaction the same between men and women participants? I love that inclusivity has come up. Would you be able to identify whether it was more women advocating for inclusive, uh, disability inclusive? Sorry, there's so many questions. Last but not least is that were you in touch with the sporadically returning communities and whether they found the whole methodology of organizing as a community useful or issues once they returned. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you, Nadia. So if, if I'm getting correctly, uh, the first the first uh, question is on the on the on 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 whether men and women were having uh, different views on the on the progress, right? Yes. Hello. Um. Yes. 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 yes that's right. Uh, yes. No. No. For 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 our communities, we 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 didn't uh, that depth we go uh, to that level of of analysis. But uh, this is, I think, I think it's 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 good for we, we, it's something that we we'll monitor uh, as we move forward. We we'll, we we'll, we'll take note of uh, of the difference was we. 
we, they, it was more of like consensus. So they would agree by themselves on the on the level of it. So, but we we'll then look at the group dynamics now going forward, whether the women have a different view from the from the men. So we'll look at the at the, at the group dynamics. I think this this could be an interest an, an, an interesting uh, analysis to to make. But uh, it was but we we're mostly looking at the at the consensus. I don't know if you um, yes, I don't know. Sorry, Hadia, if you were here when Mika was explaining yeah. the first then, part then, of the process. Then the, the issue of of. I listened to the recording, of course, for me having come in late, but the other was, yeah, disability inclusion. Who were the greater advocates, men or women? In terms of including persons with disabilities, and uh, we 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 had done some uh, some uh, disability inclusion sessions, uh, awareness sessions. So we had done it for for some time. So the the community just have a general understanding that there's need to to include uh, disability inclusion, um, to incorporate disability inclusion, and we actually have a disability inclusion committee at the at the site. So they they have an understanding of uh, disability inclusion. Thanks, Mika. Um, she's nodding. I think it's it's clear. Yeah. It's clear for yeah. Hadia now. Um, we also have a question from um, CJ. Um, from uh, World Vision, I think it is. Um, do you want to um, just unmute yourself, CJ, and ask the question to Mika directly? Sure, thank you, uh, Kristen. Greetings, Mika, and thank you for the presentation. Um, I was just curious um, to know how the community understood those different rungs on the ladder. So, you know, you have uh, several points identified. They've maybe voted on the first one at the baseline and then they continue to vote on it. I was wondering, is it just a Likert scale? Is it like, um, you know, on a scale of one to five, where are we at? Or have you assigned specific criteria maybe that need to be achieved in order to move to the next rung? I'm just curious. Yeah, so so for us, uh, you know, uh, for, for the communities that we're working with, we have to simplify it, okay? So to be honest, we, we used uh, a one to five, with uh, one uh, being the lowest and uh, five being the highest, so this this is what this is what we used, okay. But uh, I think uh, uh, allocating different criteria for for each of these scales, like maybe setting some kind of mi milestones, could be could be a good idea. Thank you. That's really helpful. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and uh, the um, one thing that we want, um, I suppose as an outcome of this session is for more people to be inspired to test out this tool with the communities that they work with um, and then eventually share your um, your lessons learned and, and your experiences and, and whatever worked for you. So if anyone wants to try it out a little bit different, um, I'll share the link um, to where you can find it in NRC's Community Coordination Toolbox now. Um, and uh, but there's some guidance as well there to how to use the tool and Mika, um, I know you have um, a presentation summarizing all of these um, uh, points. Maybe we can share that as well afterwards with the um, with the the community of practice. Is that okay, Mika? Sure, sure. Um, there's also a question from uh, Marwan and um, and then Lana. So Marwan is asking if the water system now is managed by the community themselves. The, the, the water system is not uh, managed by the community plenty uh, play a role. So the mostly is the is the balls. OK, that that we put in the in the site. So the the partners have not like fully given up the, the responsibility to the communities, but uh, but they take long to to repair. They take long to do some some general maintenance. So that's where the, the community wanted now to be equipped for them to do this on their on their own. But the, the partners have not fully uh, relinquished uh, 
or to to the to the communities. Yeah. Yeah, and these were a couple of the challenges you were mentioning um, around yeah. um, having the wash partners fully on board with the training and also um, receiving the feedback from the community on this, um, and also this lesson learned on on um, including the. Uh, the correct uh, government partners who are responsible for the the larger wash systems from the start. Um, 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 but uh, um, you said you've extended this project with another six months. This project of um, um, uh, um, monitoring the participation. So maybe we can come back in six months and have you back on Mika and see if there's any progress on whether they are managing the water systems themselves in six months. Yeah. Um, yeah. Particularly, particularly the, the point where they mobilize their own resources, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite good. Yeah. So I think that that needs to be to be tracked. It's quite ambitious of them, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, would, uh, would it would uh, to need to be tracked. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Lana, you had a question. Yeah, it's a little bit connected to uh, CJ, I think, but I have a curiosity about how. Because you mentioned in the beginning that uh, the community have to recognize the benefits from the tool and then uh, they start like using much more. How do you, how, I know that you're talking about like a participatory and monitoring tool, but how do you monitor that or how do, how does the community recognize the benefits? Like what do you do? Can you give us a bit of examples on that? Yeah. You know what, what you could do. Uh, you could uh, you could start with some some general training, okay? Some general training on uh, on participation, and um, and uh, then uh, in terms of the the benefits of the of the tool, like I said, uh, uh, they would need to 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 understand the like the 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 benefits in terms of improving their their living conditions. And uh, that it it's giving them a, a a chance to to participate and having a say in how they are being managed, you know, how the how the the services are coming to them. So if 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 you have those kinds of that that training, and again when you're introducing the tool, you 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 also bring the the benefits to them on the on the what the tool can bring to improve their living conditions. I think that that can that can help. I don't know if that's that's helpful. She's saying yes, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see us. Yeah. Um, so it's it's the same. It's the same. Uh, it's the same. It's the same approach that you use when uh, when you are coming up with the community based solutions. Okay. So you can you can just adopt the the similar similar approach that you use when you're coming up with the with the community based solutions. Um, thank you. Um, there's a few more questions for you, Mika. Um, Marwan raised his hand, and then um, Carolyn and Jackie also have questions. Um, so, Marwan, if you want to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much for this useful uh, discussion. I think, uh, following up to my question on chat, I think we know that uh, community okay. engagement is not easy and it's not difficult but it's a bit tricky. So I think uh, especially in wash uh, projects and especially in the water system operations. And uh, uh, I think uh, just I wanted to know the learning lessons. Is the tool can support us, especially for these interventions in water system? Because you said that there is some challenge, but we need is the tools can help us to address this challenge or not? You get my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the community, the, the, the tool is, is, is helpful in terms of uh, getting the community input. So the community engagement side of the work, the tool can be can be very useful. Uh, and also the tool, the tool can be useful in terms of uh, uh, the participation of the of the communities in the for instance, for instance you know for for let me give an example of, of, of Mozambique we 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 have a very big challenge from CCCM 
in the in the sites where we have huge vandalism, high rate of vandalism of of wash infrastructure. Okay, so we you know over time, you know, wash 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 partners end up being being tired. Okay, that they are putting infrastructure, the taps, all that you know are getting are getting you know vandalized. You know. And system is always reporting and and requesting for repairs and things like that. So a tool a tool like this can 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 equally be used to try and curb these kind of 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 negative things. So the community engagement side of 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 the work can really be taken up by by this by this tool. Uh, sorry. Uh, Hello. Next question. Follow up questions. Yeah. As you said that and, the the community creates their own funds for management yeah. and maintenance of the water systems. So uh, can you just, I, I wanted to know how you manage yeah. the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, accountability of the community towards the indicators or towards the, uh, the service itself and which measurement that you have to avoid risk like and corruption risks. Hello. Uh, sorry, if you can come again. You said yeah. You said the, so, uh, the, the, the yeah, issues on the before, community community coming up with their own funds for for management, right? Yes, for management. And uh, is there any rules for these tools to uh, to uh, yeah. mitigate the risk? For example, yeah. accountability yeah. in judge everyone's in the decisions and also corruption issues. Yeah. Okay, all right. So when they're bringing resources and, uh, you know, uh, then, then there's need to to support them in 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 having uh, in having some some transparent uh, uh, systems where 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 you have some some general you know uh, yeah, ethical practices that are that are open to everyone. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello, Mika. Yeah, I, I can uh, hear hello. you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yes. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was saying that uh, uh, CCCM would, would would play a role in an advisory role in uh, organizing the community, just to to ensure that the 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 the, the communities have some kind of uh, you know guidelines on how they they manage they manage the funds, you know, either depositing in some account or having it. You know, under the custody of, of of someone and agreeing on how the money is drawn and things like that. So these these are things that uh, that you'd find uh, CCCM can 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 support on that. So I come from the CCCM side, so that's why I speak so much about uh, about CCCM. So we can we can we can <laughs> we, we support the community in terms of of of, of coming up with these uh, guidelines. It's a good initiative, uh, and 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 they need to be supported. Uh, uh, in terms of how to manage or how to manage the funds and so forth in a transparent way. Thanks, Mika. Thanks. I'm going to hand over to... Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Marwan. Thanks, Mika. I'm going to hand over to yeah. Carolyn who has a question. Um, or I can read it out for you, Carolyn, if you want. Uh, your voice is better than mine. Go ahead. <laughs> um, excellent work, Mika. Carolyn says, are the members of the water management committee paid? Uh, the from CCCM side, we don't pay. We don't mm -hmm. pay them. OK, uh, but, uh, you know, different uh, wash, wash, wash partners, depending on their programs, they they tend to have uh, different, you know, policies. So they, there is some there is some some level of work that is that is paid. And some 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 pay uh, some members of the community who will be looking after the the infrastructure. But generally, from from CM side, we we don't pay either the 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 site 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 maintenance committee, site management committee. We don't we don't we don't pay. So we only pay when we when we have some 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 cash for work projects and so forth. So we we we, we develop some guidelines, okay, where we define work that is paid. And work that is not paid, 
and we 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 share with the communities and the communities fully understand that if they are just coming for meetings where they are having coordination meetings and uh, discussing about generality of 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 their welfare and how how best their their living conditions can be improved that that's not to be paid but if 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 then they have to do some some manual work that goes like beyond 4 hours where they have to dig trenches and things like that then maybe cash for work then rolls in and things like that so gen but generally they 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 are not paid hello yeah um thanks yeah. very much um yeah does that answer your your query carolyn Yes, it does. It's an interesting topic, actually, mm -hmm. Though, not just in, in WASH, but in other uh, activities in which we ask uh, uh, community members to do certain tasks. So it's really interesting. Thanks. I agree. Yeah. Um, Jackie, do you want to ask Mika your question? Oh, you're muted. Thank you, Christine. Uh, congratulations again, Mika. Well done. And thank you also for sharing these lesson learns and all these, the results of these projects. Uh, we know that sometimes it's not very easy. It's a beautiful project, but not easy. And congratulations for that again. I have a question related to the accountability system. Uh, with this project, was something related uh, or any specific activity in order to start working on accountability system? Over from my side. Okay, so so you are saying, what, did we have any any project that led for us to led us to start working on this uh, accountability? Yes, exactly. And and if there was, how accountable were the community members or the the community leaders uh, to the community? Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of accountability, we didn't have like a, a specific project that we have we had in relation to to to, to accountability. But um, uh, the in terms of how accountable the 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 selected leaders were to the to the to the to the community is uh, they 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 normally have community meetings. Which they have on their on their own that are separate, so they they report back, you know, on on these on these issues. So that's where they they report back, and that's where they they meet the community and uh, share with them, and that's where they get the the feedback. So they have separate uh, separate separate meetings. But in terms of their accountability from CCCM side, we we have some various issues uh, 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 measures that we put in place. So we have these uh, PSEA trainings, code of conduct trainings, and so forth. So we 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 provide that that training package just to ensure that when they are when they are taking up their leadership roles, they don't uh, uh, they don't then uh, uh, engage in uh, in behavior which is unethical, uh, and also they they also uh, 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 don't put conditions that uh, that promote uh, a behavior that is not uh, not ethical. So we from CCM side, we we have this code of conduct trainings. We provide them uh, uh, PCA trainings, and we we also uh, uh, do refreshers after a period of time. So when we have new members, we ensure that we we do this. Yeah. You're mute, Christine. I was asking if that answers your question. Sorry. Yes, it did. Thank you, Christine. Great. Um, um, Fernanda, I think I saw a question from you. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Just wondering in terms of the languages spoken um, in those communities and how uh, you have addressed those um that that issue thank you okay so so in terms of uh, in terms of languages spoken in the communities uh we we have community mobilizers so community mobilizers are, are recruited from among the affected populations so they speak the 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 language of the affected populations and uh, 
so they 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 help in terms of uh, facilitating the meetings and any necessary interpretations translations are are done by by these uh, uh, community community mobilizers uh, so and also we 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 identify from our, from the affected populations those that uh, that uh, speak uh, portuguese as well so the official language in Mozambique is Portuguese. So we 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 let these ones then do translations for for those for other for other members that uh, that don't that 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 are not uh, well conversant with uh, with the Portuguese language that only speak uh, you know indigenous languages. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, so we, we make use of uh, community mobilizers, make use of uh, community community members that uh, that that understand other other languages, and they can do the the translations as well. Um, does that answer your question, Fernanda? Yes, thank you. Right. Um, so, as it's been an hour, people are starting to having to leave uh, the meeting for next meetings, and um, um, I want to thank take this opportunity before more people leave to thank Mika and uh, Idin and his team for testing out this tool um, um, and uh, giving us such valuable um, feedback and lessons learned and. Um, um, extremely interesting findings and I've been talking to Mika about how we can kind of channel these into more guidance on uh, how to use the tool um, specifically addressing the lessons learned and the challenges around using it um, and it would be very useful if uh, if more of you were to use the tool um, in your work if you could let us know how how that works out for you, what are your challenges, what are your lessons learned, and we can continue the conversation around it and uh, learning from each other. And it would also uh, feed into any further guidance that we could develop. Um, uh, there's a lot of congratulations here to you, Mika, in the chat. Um, um, everyone's very impressed with the work that you and your team have done. Um, um, and uh, um if uh, if you share the presentation that you have uh, um with me Mika we can share it directly on the community engagement forum actually um later on i think um, everyone would appreciate it do you sure do you have anything you want to say yeah, so and i've also taken note yes i've taken mm -hmm. note of the of the changes some some are quite good uh, uh changes and particularly, I've taken what uh, note of what uh, Colina asked me on accountability. So I think we need to think seriously about um, about the accountability of the of the community leaders as well, the mm -hmm. group that would have been that would be steering the group. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna look at that. You know, accountability of the of the selected leaders. So I think it's something that we seriously need to look at, and uh, uh, the group dynamics as well. Uh, uh, not just to look at the the consensus level of consensus, but to look at the the the, the views of the different groups on the progress being made. And uh, Vivian also made a, a, a very good contribution on uh, on the issue of uh, of milestones. Not just to have like just a ladder of for one to five, but maybe to to try to define each each of the levels of change. OK, so probably this this could could help, you know, uh, but it would mean more. It would mean more more discussion, more time for them to to define this, you know. Yeah, so these these are just a few that I've just uh, mentioned that uh, that would need to to incorporate. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, well noted, Mika. Um, do anyone have any further comments or questions before we close the session for today? If not, um, thanks everyone for joining us. And um, uh, yeah, myself and Mika will be 
we'll we'll follow up all your input and questions today with them um with uh, further information in the future and uh, so i'll talk to you soon mika and uh, we'll see thank you, thank you all. so much christine thank yeah. you mika. Thank, thank you very Thanks much everyone i'd thank appreciate you. bye sure bye everyone bye see you